Spider-Man No Way Home unfortunately does not hold up well for me after its theater run. That's a very unpopular opinion of mine to get you hooked into this discussion. This video is not a breakdown of the entire film, but an assessment of a major writing fly take issue with in this movie. I shall be talking about why I think the screenwriters of this film extremely misunderstood the character of Green Goblin. First, we have the scene where Norman Osborn is trying to hide his goblin gear under some cardboard and trash bags in an alley. Here, the goblin calls out Norman for apparently being a coward for trying to hide who he is. Coward, we have a new world to conquer. You make me sick. Leave me alone, please. Hiding in the shadows. Hiding from who you truly are. No. This scene already has inconsistencies with this character in the first film. The original Raimi trilogy shows that Norman always kept his goblin side a secret while keeping all of his gear hidden in a secret lair within his penthouse. This identity hiding isn't a new concept to the Green Goblin. I really don't know why the Goblin is demeaning Norman for doing something which benefits both of them. I start here because this scene is very integral to whatever actions he takes in No Way Home. This is what causes Norman to break his mask out of rejection and regain control of himself for most of the second act. Furthermore, No Way Home seems to think that the Green Goblin is some kind of on and off switch, an alternate side which Norman is afraid of and acts at odds with what he wants, but that's not how it's shown to work in the Raimi films. Sometimes, I'm not myself. I'm someone else, and every time he's in control, I can't remember. While Norman starts out not knowing what the performance enhancers made him do, it was because he wasn't yet aware of the new side of himself until he started talking to himself in the mirror. The purpose of the mirror scene was to show Norman and the Green Goblin starting to work together, and to establish that the Goblin is a manifestation of Norman's deepest desires, specifically, Norman's desire to achieve power beyond his wildest dreams. So many good things all happening for you, all for you, Norman. What do you want? To say what you won't, to do what you can't, to remove those in your way. Bringing you what you've always wanted. Power beyond your wildest dreams, and it's only the beginning. From that scene on, they started working together, and Norman didn't see his alter ego as a curse he needs to get rid of, despite how he describes it, to Tom's Peter and May. But the worst character change, in my opinion, is that No Way Home seems to think that Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin is like the Joker who likes to tempt Batman into killing him. This is completely antithetical to Green Goblin's established character. Green Goblin is motivated by his desire to remain in power. He sees himself as this exceptional being who needs to stay at the top. There are eight million people in this city. And those teeming masses exist for the sole purpose of lifting the few exceptional people onto their shoulders. You, me, we're exceptional. Join me. Imagine what we could accomplish together. What we could create. Or we could destroy. Cause the deaths of countless innocents in selfish battle again and again and again until we're both dead. His reasons for turning Spider-Man onto his side are entirely based in self-preservation, while also seeing potential in their combined powers. There's only one who can stop us. 
Imagine if he joined us. He even tells Spider-Man that their constant fights will result in both of them dying to try to sway him away from turning against him. He doesn't want Spider-Man to break his morals just for the sake of it. He wants him to break his morals so that he can have an equally powerful person to assist him along his side. No Way Home forgets this and has Goblin attempt to turn Tom's Peter at the cost of his own life, which goes against Norman's desire to remain in power and control everything. To conclude, let's take a look at the scene from Spider-Man 1 where Toby's Peter has Norman dead to rights. Norman has been backed into a corner. He can't win this fight hand to hand. He stops and acts like Norman is back in control of himself. He's acting afraid of his goblin persona and is willing to reject it like he does in No Way Home. The difference here is that this is a mask of his true intentions, whereas No Way Home presents it as his earnest belief. Norman is using this act as a cover-up in order to distract Peter to backstab him with his glider. He isn't aggressively taunting Peter, rather he's doing the exact opposite, acting innocent to help him remain in power by the end. But in No Way Home, once Tom's Peter has him pretty much dead to rights, he decides to provoke Tom into killing him. He further encourages Tom's rage rather than gaining the upper hand by convincing him that Norman is back in control of himself and is a victim of Goblin's corruption. Poor Peter. Too weak to send me home to die. I just want to kill you myself. a boy. Peter, stop! Stop! It's me! She was there. Because of you. You killed those people on that balcony. The goblin killed. I had nothing to do with it. Don't, don't let him take me again. I beg you. Protect me. I may have struck the blow. I tried to stop it. I couldn't stop it. I would never hurt you. But you. You, Peter Parker, would save me. And so you have. Thank God for you. Believe in me. As I believed in you. <laughs> you are the one that killed her. The final fight of No Way Home presents Norman trying to get Tom's Peter to kill him as his way to turn Peter to Norman's set of beliefs, thus breaking his own code, despite how much this goes against his original motivation. The only way I can conclude this is that Green Goblin's attempted end goal in No Way Home goes directly against his motives from the Raimi films.